If you're going to build something from nothing, you've got to know what really works. I took a $1,000 loan and built a $5 billion business, and now I make smart investments in new businesses on Shark Tank. This is Barbara Corcoran, and you're listening to Business Unusual. This week on Business Unusual, I'm going to be answering all of the great questions you guys keep sending me in on business, life, how to move forward, how to jump over obstacles. Come on, I'm good at it, and I want to share my advice. But first... You may think you need a fancy business degree to make it big in business, but, you know, I just don't agree. Because there's a huge difference between well-educated and plain old smart. And if you're going to be in business, you better learn right now what the difference is. I learned that street smarts is a big kahuna that gets you farther, much farther in life than a fancy school can. And many people make the mistake of thinking that if they've gone to a fancy school and they've studied business like crazy and taken the right courses, by God, they're going to do well. They have what it takes now with that diploma in their hand to succeed wildly in business. And boy, are they mistaken. The great majority of these kinds of people really fail. I know. I've invested in a few of them on Shark Tank and I don't do it anymore. I meet lots of would-be entrepreneurs on Shark Tank, and they throw around the fancy words like, what are some of them? I hate them all. Burn rate. I'm going to pivot. I'm going to iterate. I keep meaning to look that one up. This is disruptive. I'm talking about just capture 1% of the market, and we are going to make millions. Oh, yeah? I don't believe them. It's kind of like, give me your money because I got the fancy terms, and I'm going to run out, and I am going to lose it and you can count they will. No doubt the textbooks can give you a few worthwhile tips. I'm not knocking education that way, but what I'm here to say is grit and perseverance is really the only kind of criteria you need. It's the real magic that gets you ahead in business, and the only way to really get it is through trial and error. By actually trying this and trying that and falling on your face, and you won't get that in the classroom. Over my career, I've lost way too much money betting on the smart kids from the fancy business schools. But I've made a ton of money betting on the person that's not sophisticated, that just has a lot of grit and knows how to get ahead. They can get through obstacles because they've practiced at it their whole life. They can think fast on their feet because they're accustomed to it. And they seem to always get the job done. Those are the people I like to put my money on. So book smarts or street smarts (laughs) i'd say give me street smarts every time and now it's time to answer your questions on business unusual hi this is adriana calling from san antonio texas my question is do you patent your idea or product first before sending it to a manufacturer thank you It's an absolute waste of time and money to patent anything before you test your product and see if anybody's even willing to pay for it. It'll only make the attorneys rich with money that you really don't have to spare. You should be spending your money on much more important things when you're starting a business. But once you have some sales under your belt and you know you have a hit on your hand or even a quasi hit, that's the time to stop and think about spending some money on getting a patent. Why would you spend the money on the patent first when you should be spending your money on the things that produce sales? Hey, Barbara, this is Jim from Traverse City, Michigan. Anyway, I got a question for you, Shark. Can you explain yourself better on how to brace yourself for a bad one? Is that just keeping your cool when receiving bad news, or do you mean curb your optimism? Thanks, Barbara. Look forward to seeing you on the tank. Jim, you need to have extreme optimism to pursue anything great, but I'm sure you know that nothing worthwhile ever comes easily. So you also need to expect a lot of opposition to getting to where you want to go. So it's kind of a balancing act. You want to be stupid enough to be really optimistic and expect the best, but realistic enough to expect that things are going to get in your way and you're going to have to jump over every one of them to keep your optimism going. Good luck. Hey, Barbara, this is Steve from Lake Bluff, Illinois. My question is, when is the right time to choose a successor for your business? And is it appropriate to tell them they're being considered? Thanks. 
You know, that's a tough question because it depends entirely on the personality of the individual you have in mind. But usually it's not a good idea to tell them in advance because you build up expectation and if things go wrong, you start to ruin an already good working relationship. But what is always a good idea is to test your premise first. I think it's smart to temporarily put someone into the leadership position and then go on a vacation for one or two weeks and see what happens. See how they do running the business while you're away. If you'll find out that the people reporting to them don't like reporting to them, you have a problem on your hands. If they can create solutions through their own and stay on course without your supervision, you might have a winner on your hands. You'll be able to better judge their performance on your return from a vacation and how well they did in your absence. One of the best things I did building my own business was leaving on frequent long vacations, which I, of course, enjoyed every moment of, and delegating full responsibility to my many sales managers. I went so far as to tell everyone not to call me for any reason whatsoever, even if something big should happen and they encountered a big problem. I told them I had full confidence in their ability to make decisions, and I found that almost every single person rose to the occasion. And because of that technique, I built tremendous strength in my management line of command and later used those experiences and judgments to better decide who should be my heir apparent when I finally sold my business. So test it first, Jim. Don't promise anything in advance and you'll make a wise decision when the time comes. And that's all the questions we have time for today. If you have a question, tweet it at Barbara Corcoran and I may just answer it on a future episode. You've been listening to Business Unusual with me, Barbara Corcoran. Come back next week to hear more steps and missteps I took on the path to success on Business Unusual. Business Unusual is part of the iHeartRadio Podcast Network. Be sure to follow Business Unusual on iHeartRadio or subscribe wherever you listen to podcasts.